As you can see, the title of my presentation is that to build new habits, uh, it, might not, it might be uh, not easy. Well, why habits? Uh, maybe it's uh, not new habits, but uh, maybe more um, precise or more detailed. And uh, well, uh, it makes more difficult all the proceeding when we do have new habits, a new, um, uh, a new procedure, which we have to uh, fulfill. So um, what uh, kind of improvements uh, do we have in the new Brussels, uh, Brussels to be? <laughs> and uh, I will follow the, the uh, topics uh, mentioned by Talia. First of all, uh, child hearing. Well, I would like uh, to explain to you uh, why hearing the child gains so much uh, importance in the regulation. Uh, well, during the negotiation, many member states raise differences in the member states uh, of how the child is heard in the proceedings or when the child is allowed to be heard. And of that practice of the member states uh, in such matter. Uh, these differences are uh, proved to be uh, um, prevalent in the grounds of non-recognition uh, of judgments, where a different or just insufficient or not enough professional, um, or not enough prof professional uh, of the child or just lack of such uh, hearing was shown to be contrary to the public policy of the certain member states. Uh, so that is why the member states uh, sought to detail uh, the manner of hearing a child in the proceeding, to standardize the hearing of a child. Uh, it was also underlined that the hearing, the right for the child to be heard uh, shall be grounded very clearly. And uh, that is why the regulation states that this hearing shall be provided in a real and effective way. Um, the technical issues of how it will be provided uh, personally by the judge or by experts or another person or entities uh, to whom such a task uh, has been delegated uh, has been left to, um, to the national regulation uh, of the member states. Uh, so in this way, it became possible to introduce directly as one of the ground for non-recognition of the decision, the failure uh, to hear of the child. Uh, the obligation of hearing a child has been strengthened by introducing it uh, into forms, almost to all of them, which uh, have been very detailed. It is something new for us as a practitioner, uh, this uh, kind of forms and a lot of items in that forms. We have to be very, very... Um, mm, very interested as a practitioner to uh, follow these items because it can be drowned to, uh, for the opposite party, parties or just for us to, um, to, um, to just asking for the uh, non-recognition, the, uh, the judgment. Uh, in recommended, uh, uh, mm, you read all of them uh, by uh, to be familiar. Uh, I recommend it to you uh, to to read all of these um, uh, uh, forms in detail because they give, as I said, a lot uh, of tips on what must be done in a procedure. For practitioner, this is a very important element 
because any lack of incuracy in uh, completing of uh, completing the form gives us the grounds for contesting the judgment or at least uh, delaying its execution. Conversely, uh, when acting uh, the procedure, we must remember uh, what elements uh, for the, um, from the perspective of uh, obtaining a full-fledged form shall be completed. Uh, and here, as example, I would like to uh, indicate, I would like to attach your attention to form one, which concerns the refusal to return of the child due to article 13b or the second paragraph of article 13 uh, Hague Convention. I mean the child uh, refusal, um, uh, which may be, uh, it may be very surprising. There is no information in this form uh, whether the child was hurt in accordance with the provision of Article 21. So, uh, in a case when the ground is the position of a child, that uh, the child doesn't want to, to come back, there is no information in the form that the child was hurt. So, I was thinking why, uh, why it, it was con constructed in such way. And my conclusion was that um, such uh, information shall be checked by the court to which it, was, it will be passed uh, with accordance to Article 47.4. The court have to examine all circumstances. So I think uh, that will be uh, for us as a practitioner the very important point to secure the, the right of the child and to, uh, to follow this obligation uh, for, the, uh, for the court to, to examine exactly all circumstances and to hear, hear in a proper way, effective, uh, the child. Uh, and I can um, share you, with you some examples from practice. Uh, why, for example, the Polish court uh, in some cases didn't hear uh, the child uh, which was uh, 10 or 12 years old because uh, the child was speaking only English or, uh, or Dutch or French and uh, in Poland there's no enough officers or the court doesn't uh, usually don't speak so fluent English to examine the child to uh, hear the child. So I think this can be very useful for us as a practitioner to, um, to let the child to be heard by the court, which speak uh, uh, in, uh, in the language of the child. Well, the problem would be if this court of the habitual residence doesn't speak the language of the child. So, well, it's, it's, uh, for me, uh, it obtained as a potential problem. So we will see as uh, it will uh, operate in practice. Well, next, um, next uh, um, position is timing. Um, it was necessary to specify the time at which the, the court uh, is to examine uh, the motion for the return of the child under the HUD Convention. Once, uh, due to many debts um, and various practices in um, counting the, the uh, six week uh, period. Two, because issuing a final decision within such a limit time in reality is almost impossible or very, very difficult. So giving the six, the six weeks for each instance and including, uh, um, excluding, I'm sorry, excluding the inter-instance period uh, was intentional. There is a different practice uh, in member states 
and therefore it would be difficult to standardize the national practice uh, procedure within strict limits uh, referring to this um, inter-instance period. And here I see a potential reason for the prolongation of the proceeding. In Poland, this time between instances where the court sends each other the files uh, can take from one month to even 10 months. So it depends. Uh, with regards to the hot proceeding, well, uh, we do have a centralization in this uh, proceeding, in this kind of proceeding, and we do have 11 first instance courts and one appeal court in Warsaw. So we can imagine that sending the files after the first instance to Warsaw can take uh, some time. Of course, where well, after um, two years ago, we have organized uh, this special court for hack proceedings. And uh, I'm happy to announce that uh, we succeed to decrease the time uh, uh, to close the, uh, um, um, the hack convention proceedings uh, very, very much. Uh, usually before the, the new act, uh, about three or four years ago, usually the time for the close the hack convention proceeding took uh, two, three years or something like this. Now, I do have cases when uh, uh, the case was started um, in, Janu uh, in July, and uh, tomorrow I will have the, the trial in the second instance. So it is quite short time. And I can truly recommend that I think that the centralization, uh, having in mind um, so detailed act as the regulation to be is, uh, is the best solution because uh, in the special courts, there are judges with deep knowledge, uh, which are familiar with the international jurisprudence, which uh, uh, are familiar uh, with, the, um, with the regulation to be, and I hope uh, they will manage to be familiar with this huge new regulation uh, to be. Uh, well, second point uh, I mentioned is second chance procedure. <clears throat> As Katerina has already mentioned, um, uh, some background of the changes. Uh, well, I want to share with, um, uh, with you my relation from the negotiation process, uh, which concerns the discussion, huge discussion, on the legitimacy of keeping this mechanism in the new regulation. Um, there were many voices, especially from Central and Eastern Europe countries, to abandon this mechanism. The reason was uh, that nothing good comes out of it and only prolongs and complicates uh, the procedure the opposition of the other country was uh, quite strong. Therefore, uh, member states uh, decided to reach some kind of compromise uh, in such a way that the application of this mechanism was clarified, a little bit limited, and uh, its teeth were knocked out. What I mean, uh, it means that it is no longer a mechanism so um, unshakable. Now it is possible not to recognize or not to execute it in a very li limited way, of course, but still it is mentioned in Article 50. It is something new. So it is um, a, a, some kind of compromise between abolishing and uh, uh, sustaining and uh, this uh, mechanism, which is, um, well, quite controversial. And um, 
the last uh, improvement I would like to mention is mediation. And uh, I must admit that I'm really happy uh, with the content of um, recital 22, which mentioned already uh, uh, Natalia. Um, this uh, recital gives uh, new possibilities uh, to close the case before the court conducting the hack proceeding by acceptance of the complex parental agreement, which operates both on the parental responsibility matters and return of the child issues. Uh, we know well uh, that uh, the mediation during the proceeding uh, of the child's return uh, under the Hague Convention, uh, in most cases, uh, refer to um, possible uh, arrangements regarding um, parental responsibility. Sometimes even agreeing, agreeing uh, on the condition for uh, exercising, uh, exercising parental responsibility is a condition for the return or stay of the child in a new country. And this caused many uh, procedure complications. Um, many procedure and procedural uh, complications. Uh, different court in competent, uh, is competent to deal with the child's return, then another court uh, to accept a parental state, uh, a settlement. For this reason, many mediation failed and the agreements were not concluded. So it's really a uh, pity to not use the mediation to um, letting the parents decide by themselves how they would like to care about the child. But it is close related to the parental responsibility. As I said, very often I met a situation that uh, it was a condition uh, to, uh, to return or just to, to stay the, the child. Of course, uh, we have found um, in practice uh, right now, we have found a way uh, by applying Article 12.3, uh, as I remember well, Brussels to bees, where one of the parents accepts the jurisdiction of the uh, family court of the state where the hack uh, proceeding were conducted. Sometimes, however, it was not the same court. Uh, uh, but uh, we do have some kind of possibility. It is quite difficult, but uh, yes, it's possible, uh, but not so easy as it was, um, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, prepared in the uh, new regulation. I'm also happy uh, because uh, according to the new provision, the special hack court and its judges uh, with deep knowledge and the cross border uh, of the cross border regulation uh, will deal with a cross border family case. Uh, from the beginning of this uh, seminar, we all mentioned the uh, complicity and detailed issues uh, in the new regulation. Uh, so it can, it, it's easy to imagine how difficult it can be for the judge who uh, is not familiar with international uh, jurisprudence, it is with, uh, who is not familiar with the Brussels regulations, uh, with the European Union regulation, and usually apply only the national law. So for me, in the cases, uh, in the cross-border cases, which usually are really complicated, uh, it is very important. And for us uh, as a practitioner, it is good opportunity uh, to obtain very good and um, 
in accordance with the all provisions of the regulation uh, to obtain a, a good uh, um, order or good judgment. I could just mention about the um, uh, potential difficulties. First of all, um, this stage where the, the judge have to uh, or decide to, to secure the, the best interest of the child by issuing protective measures um, in the circumstances of Article 13b. Uh, I remember the discussion in the, during the negotiation that such a measure shall be real, shall be able to execute in the other member states, and uh, such measure uh, shall uh, just exist in the other member states. So we can imagine that the Polish court uh, it, Issue uh, issues the um, the decision of the uh, uh, protective measures, which doesn't exist, for example, in France. So it forces uh, the the judges to for close cooperation with the other uh, judges from the other member states or through the central authority uh, to obtain some kind of information, what kind of measures uh, it is possible for this certain uh, case to apply. And the second potential difficulties I see, it's um, uh, this part of the proceeding where uh, the, the child have to examine the graph risk in a place of return. 